In 2019, we began to build our dream. But the journey started long before you were invited to watch. We walked a path that spanned nearly two decades. There were times of joy, pain, and everything in between. Our lives have completely changed and we're ready to tell you how it happened. We're not holding back. Our mistakes, regrets, what we wish we could change, our best decisions, and if we do it again, you'll hear it all. Come back in time with us behind the camera and answer the question, is, is self-building self worth it? it? All right, welcome back to Mr. Post Frame. This is our series called, Is Self-Building Worth It? Um, I believe that it is, even though I believe that maybe building for other people isn't worth it. <laughs> but anyway, that's not the question we're asking today. No, it um, isn't. We have a couple really good resources for everybody. For those of you who don't know, we self-built our own barn dominium if you're new to the channel. And now we design all over the country and build for other people. Um, do you want to talk about our design services? Sure. Head over to back40buildings.com. You can find all of the information you need in the description of this video. We design stick frame, steel frame, and post frame bar dominium plans. Uh, we can help you out with one of our stock plans, custom design, whatever it is that you need. Uh, we're here to help you move forward and yeah. and live in a barn dominium like we do. And we also have a cool patron group, mm -hmm. which is a group for self-builders. Um, you can join, it's a great community. You get to share your build. We have lives every month. You get to ask me questions. It's a pretty cool group. Yep. Um, so check that out as well. But let's go ahead and just jump into this. This is a, looks like this is concrete, which is a very, very, very important step in the process. Concrete is here. They're gonna start working, so. Do a little video, I don't know how well my batteries are gonna last. The cameras are already going dead. This uh, is how many years ago? Uh, November 14th, 2019 is when this video got published. So our concrete's been in for five years and it looks exactly like it did basically when they put in. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so the main things that I noticed when I was browsing the comments on this original video uh, was that people have a lot of questions about the rebar. So rebar in uh, concrete, I feel like, you know, that's transitioned, like what people do has transitioned over the last decade and things like that. Um, so somebody mentioned like you need, you need to have all the rebar on chairs and, you know, stuff like that. So talk about that a little bit. So here's a couple things. There, there are a lot of contractors out there for interior slabs. They'll just want to use uh, fiber mesh in the concrete. We do two foot on center rebar in all of our slab work. Um, what kind of rebar do you? We use fiberglass. Mm -hmm. um, tests have shown that it's just as strong as metal rebar. It's super light, so you can carry about 20 pieces versus one piece of metal rebar. Mm -hmm. Um, it's easy to cut, it's easy to handle, um, and if you properly prepare your slab, the only thing it's doing is, you know, we're, we're putting relief cuts in the concrete, so it's, it's holding the concrete um, together and it's keeping it from shifting, which it shouldn't anyway, but it is a good practice. Um, there's never going to be enough um, tension on this slab that's going, that should cause it to... Um, you know, crack abnormally or anything mm -hmm. like that. I mean, the loads on this are very, very small um, compared to what the concrete's rated for. This, we pour all five inch slabs, 4,000 PSI, um, which is like awesome. Like there's nothing mm -hmm. in here that would ever, should ever cause that any issues. Right. Um, the rebar in the middle of the slab, putting, um, my contractor does not like putting them on um, chairs because they get knocked over. If you're using a pump truck where you're dragging a hose around, it's just going to knock them off. Um, the guys, if you ever watch our videos, they'll they'll pull their hand down and pull the rebar up in to the slab. And we do all in floor heat, so our rebar is already about one inch off the bottom. Typically, because of the tension you're putting on slab, that that stress is in the bottom third of your slab anyway. Mm -hmm. So if it favors the lower half, which I actually like, it's better. Sure. So um, you can use chairs. It's just a little more difficult when you're pouring. It's hard to keep them on the chairs when you have 
you know, 10 guys walking around, you're dragging a hose, you mm -hmm. got tools, it's just as easy to pull it up as you go. Yeah, yeah, because pouring your uh, interior slab is something that very few people are doing themselves. Uh, most people don't have the manpower to be able to pull off the sides that most jobs are. Mm -hmm. um, so you're gonna have a crew of people coming in. Uh, the way that we operate with with our contractor is, you know, like Paul mentioned, like all the in-floor heat stuff is done, everything is prepped, and then they come through, lay the rebar the day before usually, and then come back in the morning and do the pour. So our in our case, um, they used a buggy yeah, so to bring the concrete in, and that's what people were kept asking, like, why not have a truck? We've done this a bunch of different ways. The, one of the biggest questions is, why don't you pour your slab first? Well, the concrete is usually our finished our finished floor. So we don't want to drive equipment on it and mess it up. We don't want to drop tools on it and chip it. So we typically will build our structures first. And there's multiple different ways um, to do this. In this case, we had three quarter inch plywood laid down over the in-floor heat tubing and rebar. And then they drove their buggies across it, worked good. You can use a pump truck with a hose um, you could potentially, if you wanted to use like a pump truck with a boom and you didn't want to build your walls on the ground, or you could build your walls on the ground and then just not put the roof on it and they could have the boom come up and over the top, mm -hmm. which would be an option. Yeah, and that's going to, a little bit of what you do will be somewhat dependent on the lay of your property and uh, how much space you have around it. You know, you've got some, yeah. some more residential areas that people are building in now, and so you'd have a lot less room. So you're probably gonna see some of those other uh, options that you're not gonna see from us. Because most of, most of the places we're building, there's a lot of space around the property. Yeah, and so a couple other questions that I know we get a lot, as you watch this, the original video, you can see this, they had a couple guys assigned the, the plywood moving that oh this fly um, and it worked really good um, it was very efficient a couple other things to think about like if you're gonna have a custom shower um, what I did in our house and some other houses that we've had custom showers in is I will mark that out with the concrete contractor and I'll have them pre slope get our first slope actually established um, in the actual slab. So then I don't have to pour that first one and then put my membrane. So mm -hmm. like my rubber membrane can go down right over the concrete floor and then I can pour my mud shower yeah. base. I would say this, this was pretty um, interesting to watch the video because it's like one of the first times that more than like two people <laughs> were doing something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to see an actual full crew, you see why having a house built for you goes so much more quickly. Well, for the most part, I mean, yeah. you got, you have to have enough people that know what they're doing. Right. Yes. You know, they're, they're the same guys run the screed board every time. The same guy runs the laser level to make sure they're at grade. Um, some things that you need to go over with your contractor is, um, you know, where, if you're going to have a custom shower, where that's located, where you want like a floor drain so that doesn't get buried. Um, you need to pressurize all your um, hydronic lines to make sure if one gets damaged, you can fix it. And all the times that we've done this, I've only had one where we had a break. We had a patron that had a break in his. And because it was under pressure, you're able to locate the, the line and fix it. It does not happen often, but you, you don't want to lose a line. It wouldn't be the end right. of the world if you lost it, but you don't want to either. Right. And we had... Uh not too long ago, we talked to somebody that they their contractor didn't pressurize the lines, and so then they went to like hook everything up at the end, of, you know, like they're ready to use the in-floor heat, and some of it's not working. Yeah. Um, so you definitely definitely want to want to pay attention to that. And then, uh, oh guys, these guys worked so hard. I think I think the first day they were there till like one in the morning. The finishers. Yeah, and that's another thing. Like when you have a vapor barrier underneath your slab. At this point, I was putting a, a plastic vapor barrier down, then my insulation. The insulation we use now has a, uh, the vapor barrier built in it, but there's nowhere for the water to escape. So it's gonna take a lot longer for your concrete to cure. So you wanna make sure, like I hung lights up around the edge, so, cause I knew that they were probably gonna be there after dark to make sure they had light to work. 
Um, some other things to think about is, you know, make sure that they're gonna cut your garage door aprons back um, in the right spot so you have a slope where your garage door comes down. You wanna make sure that they do the uh, stress cuts or relief cuts within 24 hours. I mean, most concrete contractors should know this and do this. They should be about a third of the thickness of the slab and they should be cut within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, typically, we do post eight foot on center, so our, our standard cuts are an eight foot on center. Um, but in a lot of our homes, we do the four by four squares or diamonds, which mm -hmm. adds a, kind of some decorative features to the concrete. It mm -hmm. looks really nice. Yeah. And you're controlling all of those cuts or right. all of your cracking in those cuts. And then you grout them like you can't see any surface cracks in our concrete. Mm -mm. And I think that has a lot to do with one, the prep underneath, but you know, your concrete is gonna shrink as it cures. So if you do that within the first 24 hours and you do four by four squares, it's gonna cost you more money, but you're gonna control all those uh, cracks. Right. Yeah, and then the next day, uh, they came back to do the cuts. They did the porch as well at that point, which we... I think this, we poured this in what? Was it November? Uh, it was Halloween, it was I believe. Halloween. So yes. it was just the end of October. And you can see I had part of the metal on uh -huh. um, up to where I was going to build the porch. I mean, you really, as, a, as if you're going to be self-building, I mean, you're going to have to kind of piece these things together. Like, I, I was up against... Um, you know, the, the weather, I wanted to get the concrete in before it got too cold. So mm -hmm. I transitioned from putting steel on to, um, getting ready for concrete and making right. sure I got that done so that we would have the opportunity to work inside all winter. Right. Yeah. In a perfect world, like there is a point when you're not quite done with the outside, but you're, uh, you could probably have other contractors, you know, we've had a few people do that where they've had other contractors come in and we're still working on the structure um, yeah. in order to just kind of get it to where by the time the structure is done, you've also gotten the concrete in so you can kind of click along um, with that part. But the porches, um, you've talked about this a lot. You set the brackets up so that they're out of the they're out of the concrete and we do four inch slab usually for the porches. Yeah, um, all of our interior slabs are five inches and then the, the porches end up usually around four inches. Um, but I make sure that all of my posts are gonna be out of the concrete. So if you ever have to replace them, which I have, if you use like uh, Douglas fir or cedar posts and beams, you're typically not gonna have to, those aren't gonna warp like a treated post wood, but I have had to go back to builds pretty quickly and replace treated. That's why I've completely stopped using those for porches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it obviously is a lot cheaper, but you know, you have that, that chance that they're going to warp. Right. 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 Um, I can, you know, as this is like a milestone when you get to this point of self building, when you get to put your concrete in, it kind of gives you I don't know, it's just kind of a great feeling. It almost makes it feel like, hey, like we're, we made this huge milestone. We can start kind of finishing the inside and stuff. Mm -hmm. it kind of gives you a feel for what it's gonna be like and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing that you should probably talk with your contractor about in advance is who's going to do the prep work for like covering windows, um, you know, yes. the openings, that kind of thing. Um, and it, it can be, it could be a little bit tricky. Like if you have high windows, like we do, uh, and the windows up, up high are fine, but here's, here is like the ideal scenario. And I'm in the build we're doing right now. I'm going to try to do this is getting your shell up, getting all your windows framed in, <clears throat> getting it wrapped and then having the concrete put in. Uh, because then you're not having to worry about doors, windows, getting concrete splattered on them. <clears throat> it makes it really easy for them to finish up to your door openings and then installing your doors and all that stuff isn't, you know, isn't a big deal after the fact. It's just, it's hard to navigate all that. I feel like it was much easier as a self build to 
control everything than it is a building for other people mm -hmm. because you're on a t you're on a stricter timeline with with the other clients. Um, but I would say that would be like the optimal time is to do it when before your doors are in mm -hmm. and your windows because then you don't even have to worry about it. Right, right. But if you do have windows and doors installed, they like need it's to be good covered. Yeah, because I don't care how they're putting it down; it will splatter, and if it doesn't get removed right away, especially if you have like black windows or something, it can be difficult to get that splatter off. Mm -hmm. So, should your porch concrete be tied into your into your slab? And my answer to that is no. So, you have an exterior grade board, and so that is separating your interior slab from the outside. So there's insulation, you have your grade board, then you have your insulation, then you have your interior slab. So there's no reason to um, tie it into the main slab with rebar. Um, we have no frost protection on our exterior slab. Um, the porch slab. The porch slab. And I mean, I haven't seen, there's a few cracks. Now, the thing that I'm doing differently with our porch brackets that um, I did for ours is I would form up a box above and pour concrete in that. So then I would have four corners of concrete. And I have a couple out here that where there's little small cracks and I'll, I'll have Justin um, get a video of that. But what we do now is when I do my piers, I slide a two by four over the top of that pier and set my bracket. So then when we pour our slab, it goes all under there and there, so there's no corners. Because where you're gonna get cracking with concrete is off corners. And so we've kind of eliminated that altogether by the way we set mm -hmm. our, our brackets. And it's a lot easier and quicker than forming up these boxes. It was just so time consuming. And so it was more out of the necessity of being more efficient than like the cracks. Um, because there's not a lot out there. There's like, a, I think there's one or two where we have a crack coming off of a corner and they're pretty minor. Um, now I will tell you like where our garage door aprons are. Mm -hmm. We do um, put rebar into the concrete slab of the door aprons and tie the exterior slab to the interior because you're gonna have, a, you know, you got your car coming in and out all the time. You just wanna make sure that your in-floor heat tubes are, you know, six inches off the edge. So when you drill in, you're not gonna drill into your in-floor heat, but then we just tie in with rebar. And you need to make sure that you're in the center and you need to make sure that you have really good compacted gravel so that over time it doesn't, you know, pop. Yes, yeah, so if, I've seen that in a lot of residential areas where the driveway will be yeah, a lot sink. lower and stuff. And that's, for those of you who aren't sure, that's not actually how it's supposed to be. No, it's not be. supposed to be like that. And that's, that's from improper prep. Yeah. Like not having compacted, because what happens in typical neighborhoods is they come in, they have an excavator go through, he digs it all out, and it's moving at such a fast pace that it never gets, that soil never has time to settle because they're pouring foundations. That is a little bit different in a post frame where if you're doing piers, you're not going to have that, all that soil is not going to be excavated. So you're not going to have as high a probability of it being, of it sinking. Yeah. So good, good preparation is always key. Having a crew that understands uh, what to do. Also, there's some very, like I've seen in some barnuminiums in the in the south, I remember one in particular, like they did, they poured the slat interior and the porch all as one pour and stuff like that. And like, you just can't, you just can't do that kind of stuff up here because our weather is just so different. Well, even, and, even down there, if you do that, there's, you gotta, you're gonna have to do some kind of cut and put some flashing down there because, you know, it will rain. So eventually. Like eventually it's gonna rain and you're gonna have, you're gonna have water. So yeah, same thing like, you know, Texas, they, they really didn't think about the extreme cold and like they had all these water lines break and stuff like that. So it's just good practice. Um, I would never personally pour the interior and, and we set, another thing to talk about is we make sure our, our porch slabs are set down a minimum of two inches below the finished concrete in the house. Even though we have grade board, even though we have flashing, it won't let snow pile up, it won't let water melt and there's no possible way that it can get in. Right. So it's just, you know, same thing like with the continuous foundation, you're, you're setting that foundation up out of the ground so that nothing can get in. Right, right. How deep are relief cuts typically? Um, were you not listening? I wasn't. 
Uh, Did you already answer that? A third. The third, the relief cut should be cut within 24 hours and they should be a third, 25% to a third of the depth of the slab. All right. Well, I, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I asked. Um, I'm glad you were paying attention. Yeah, to I, I wasn't. Sorry. It's all right. I get it. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All so right. That's, that's that. That's that. Looks like it's about to storm outside. Yep. There's some thunder. So well, that's going to be a wrap, right? It's going to be a wrap. Thanks everybody for tuning in to is self building worth it. We can't wait to talk about this in the next episode. Uh, we're going to uh, get into some really fun stuff in a couple of shows. So yeah. yeah. So as Set always, as always, we appreciate you watching. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends and we will catch you on the next video.